Coming up on this edition of the Center of It All. We stop by a store in downtown State College offering free community workouts. We have an update on the State College High School building project. And we check out an event benefiting student veterans. These stories and more coming up next on the Center of It All. Hello and welcome to the center of it all. We were recently up at Tussie Mountain for Vets Fest, a music festival benefiting the construction of a new Penn State Student Veterans House. Penn State University Veterans Organization started in uh, 1968, uh, middle of April I believe, and uh, two years later they, built, they basically remodeled their own uh, house that used to be a burnout fraternity. And uh, from there, they lived in the house up until 1989, uh, mostly Vietnam vets coming back uh, because of the, the attitude that the public had at that point. They weren't very, very well received. Uh, anyway, 1989, the house burnt down. Um, we had about 300 members at that point, a couple of thousand in our database, and we lost all of our records. From there, it kind of pretty much went downhill. In 2014, the Association of Penn State Veterans Alumni was formed to bring this brotherhood together again and to build a new student veterans house. Well, we're actually trying to start off and fundraise for about a million dollars to get the project started. Uh, we've got till about 2017, uh, that's two years from now, to, to get a good chunk of change together to start buying property so we can put a house on it. Their first big fundraiser being Vets Fest, a two-day music festival. The Penn State Veterans Organization is about veterans serving veterans. They pretty much uh, help other veterans deal with transitional issues. You know, they have, they have meetings, they're a social organization where uh, they get together and they have meetings on Thursday night at the State College VFW. The, uh, the SUVO group, the PSUVO group, SUVO, meets at 8 o'clock on Thursday nights and the ODS group meets at 7 o'clock and they're, they're both kind of cohesive, there are two groups together, but they basically help with transition, um, helping people get their benefits, they send them up the outreach office and they work with the university and give, give new veterans a sense of belonging when they get here, I guess. This house would benefit the 1,000 veterans on campus today, transitioning into civilian and student life. When I got here, you know, the Vietnam era was a very tragic time for veterans returning. Today it's a totally, I mean, we're a 180 from where they were in, Viet, in, in the Vietnam era. I came in just at the tail end of Vietnam, even though we still have a lot of Vietnam vets at that point. Um, the veterans today, at least initially, are welcome home with open arms, but then they get into this huge campus, 40,000 students. They're more left to fend on their own. And accordingly, you know, with, if national statistics show us right, we're at about 25%, that means 22 to 25% say have some type of PTSD issues. So we're looking at 200, 250 people on this campus alone. Uh, throughout the Penn State system with all 23 branch campuses, I think we're running about 3,500. Throwing in the world campus, there's another 1,500 there. We're pretty close to four or 5,000 veterans across the whole Penn State system. Um, th they need some place where they can come and be among people that they're comfortable working with. Somebody they can sit down and have a beer with and say, look, you know, how many friends did you lose over there? What did you go through? That they can relate. And, and transition to a civilian lifestyle where they're they're totally regimented you know when they're military up at 5 30 in the morning five o'clock in the morning bed at 9 30 you know it's and they've got something going on all day it's it's a big transition for these folks getting out and coming into the civilian life and then starting in school uh, i know when i got out of the service i actually got what they call basket leave i got out september 1st to start school at penn state i still had 60 days of active duty time to do of course, they let me slide and took care of me, but I didn't know a soul when I came to town. I didn't know anybody. Thank God I met up with the veterans organization that, that invited me to dime beer night at the Vets Club at that point, and I met everybody. My wife, kids were involved, and my kids are in their mid-30s now, but they used to see Santa Claus at the Vets House. I mean, it was a community. You know, uh, the Vets today don't have that. That's, that's the biggest downfall, I think. Rebuilding the organization from scratch the Veterans Alumni Association is optimistic about growing their membership back to where it once was. We brought back from the brink of nothingness 
Last year they used to have three people coming to a meetings. Now they got 15 to 20. I think they've got about 25 or 30 paid members. But like I say, they, they didn't have hardly any participation. And I think it had to do a lot with the, there was no alumni association to help them out, to guide them along, uh, to get involved. And, and now we're here though, we're here for the duration. Um, so that's, we're, we're hoping for 50 by the end of the year and 100 by the blue and white game next year. So we, get, we had to start from somewhere. And uh, the actual Facebook page, when I got involved last January was about 100 people. I think we're up to 350 now. So we're really taking, we're really getting a lot of members and a lot of involvement. This nonprofit will keep working to collect funds to provide student veterans with a place to call their own. When we come back on the center of it all, we stop by a state college retailer promoting fitness. Welcome back. There is a shop right here in State College offering free fitness groups to the community. A running inspired life. That's the anthem of a new running shop in downtown State College offering weekly group runs. So we've been having a running group all summer long um, and it, it's great. It's, uh, we've got a few different pace groups. Uh, we go about anywhere from about three to four and a half miles every week. It's free, open to anybody who wants to come along and run with us. And we, uh, we have a few people from our store who usually lead the runs. And uh, yeah, it's just a good time and it's a, it's a good way to kind of get out and have an excuse to go for a run. Why? Because Anthem is more than just a store, they're a community. Life is too short to just run a boring retail store and not, and, you know, not engage with the community and not put on fun things that I want to be a part of and that our staff wants to be a part of. So we get often asked by people, hey, where can I run around here? And we get asked, you know, can you show me different yoga poses? Can you talk to me about different yoga studios? And we just said, why not just once a week we give people a little bit of a, of a sample of that and let them come here and, and we'll take them out on a run ourselves. These groups aren't just about running fast, but overall fitness. So we actually do a run and then we do yoga afterwards. Uh, and we usually get about 30 to 35 for the runs and then probably about 20 to 25 for the yoga afterwards. Anybody's welcome to come. We've got a group that does running and walking. They mix it up, they'll jog a little bit, then they'll walk, jog a little bit. And we've got a group that likes to go out, you know, fairly fast and, and push themselves pretty hard. And then we have everything in between. Anthem also teams up with other local businesses to get the community active. We team up with CrossFit Lionheart here in town and once a month we do a run from the store that then ends over at the CrossFit gym and they do a kind of basic intro CrossFit class for free there too. So uh, being very community involved and being involved with different gyms and studios here in, in town is, is a big priority for us and it's something that we're just scratching the surface of right now. But we, uh, we definitely want to, we always say a rising tide lifts all boats. So we figure that if we can help inspire people to be more active and more engaged in, in the fitness, it's going to help all the different uh, people in this town who, are, who do that either as a business or as an instructor or people who just like to encourage other people to be active. Ryan's looking to inspire people to enjoy running as much as he does. I, I think like a lot of people, I probably have a little bit of a love-hate relationship. You know, there's, I, I, I love you know, the way it makes me feel. I love being in shape. I love um, you know, improving and challenging myself. I love it for the mental benefits and clearing, clearing my head. Uh, you know, in terms of running in State College, of course, I love the trails. You know, I love running out in, in Rothrock. Um, and, and going out and going out to the Po Valley and all the different uh, state parks and trails that are in the area. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful part of the state to be running in. I feel very fortunate to be here and to be able to explore it. Every fitness event at Anthem is free and open to athletes of all levels. People like it, you know, people like it. I think the, uh, you know, the only feedback is people wish we did it more often. Check out their shop and events at Anthem.com. The students are back at State College High School Here's how they will be affected by the new construction. This summer, construction began on the 36-month State College High School building project. For how it's going to affect the students this semester, we spoke with Interim Vice Principal Curtis Johnson. We are waiting for the, this road to be finished behind us. Um, it's due to be uh, completed sometime in September. Uh, then we'll rework uh, some of our parking with students and staff to make the appropriate. The road behind him will be a loop access road to the back of the south building where the new main entrance is. There are not too many major adjustments for the students, says Johnson, but for the changes in classroom location, the school has developed a new map. Early on in the year, there's 
there's not going to be a lot of adjustments. Uh, the major adjustments, like I said, is going to be uh, uh, they're going to have to find some new classes. Uh, the library, for example, is there's going to be three more classrooms in there. So uh, they're going to have to make that kind of adjustment. Uh, our large LGI is divided into four classrooms. So uh, they're going to have uh, A, B, C, or D type of uh, um, classrooms. So they're going to have uh, uh, some challenges finding their new places, but uh, we have developed new maps uh, for them to ease that process. For safety across construction zones and Westerly Parkway, there is some added security. We have hired a, a private firm to come in uh, to assist us with uh, security with the crossing. Of, um, we're going to have two additional um, security guards outside as well as two security guards inside to help with the traffic. Phase one of the project is scheduled to begin in October, which consists of new construction on the south parking lot. Visit scasd.org for all information concerning the high school construction project. When we come back on the center of it all, we stop by Mel's Kitchen for another tasty meal. Welcome back. The kids are back in school and your hectic schedule begins. But don't stress out because Mel has got a quick and easy skillet dinner to fit your busy lifestyle. Back to school is perhaps the most stressful time of year for the busy, hardworking family. School shopping, lunches, after school activities, fundraisers, homework, playtime, bedtime, and in between it all, dinner's got to be cooked. Today, with one baking pan and one skillet, I'm gonna show you how to make my mess-free, stress-free chicken parmesan. Let's get started. The electric skillet was my back-to-school secret weapon. I relied on it a lot more than my crock pot because the majority of my recipes just couldn't be cooked perfectly in the crock pot. This nice big electric skillet allowed me to feed my family of five and when I put the lid on it and set it on warm, it enabled them to be able to come and go and grab a really hot meal in between their busy schedule. I promised you mess-free and stress-free and that's exactly what you're going to get. I've lined a baking pan with plastic wrap and I've put a, a sheet of parchment paper in the bottom. I'm using 10 chicken tenderloins today, and I'm using 10 because when I wrote this recipe a long time ago, I had three kids, so 10 tenderloins fed the five of us. I've lightly pounded them with the flat side of a meat mallet, which took about 30 seconds, and I've salted and peppered the tops, and now I'm just sprinkling them with flour. I'm gonna take them, pick them up with my fingers, flip everyone over, Almost done. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the second sides. And now I'm just going to let these sit for about three minutes to let the uh, flour uh, absorb some of the moisture from the surface of the chicken. Okay, my chicken is all rested. And what I've done in this little container here is I've beaten three large eggs with about a quarter cup of water. And I really beat it good so that the eggs are completely incorporated. And I'm going to pour my egg wash right over the top of my chicken. And I'm just going to tip the pan a little to get it to spread out across the bottom. And what I'm going to do for the next minute or so is I'm just going to flip, I'm going to flip all my chicken over. It's not going to coat it on the first flip. You're going to have to do this one or two times. Spread them around, just get all that wonderful egg wash. You'll know when you're done because all of your chicken will be wet on both sides. You won't see pieces of flour. It's a little messy on your hands, but it's really easy to clean up when you're done. All right, that looks great. They're all coated in the egg wash. Now just give me a second to wash my hands and then we're going to coat them in our breadcrumbs. 
chicken is all coated in the egg wash. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, oh, about, uh, about, oh yeah, about two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. I'm using panko because they're really crunchy. You can use classic Italian style breadcrumbs if you like. I'm just going to pat this into the tops. And we're only going to coat the chicken on the top side here because when it goes into the pan, I'm going to put them in coated side down and then we'll coat the second sides in the skillet. I've melted four tablespoons of butter into four tablespoons of olive oil and I still have my uh, skillet at a relatively low heat, about 200 degrees. And I'm going to pick up my tenders and I'm going to put them in this pan bread crumb coated side down, side by side, real close together. All right. And as for that mess free, this is really mess free. I don't even have to wash the baking pan. I'm just rolling up this plastic wrap and throwing it all away. Wipe my hands and we're back in business. I'm going to take my panko again, my breadcrumbs, and I'm going to sprinkle them over the tops. We're still at a pretty low heat here. Pat them in. You can't hurt yourself. This isn't hot enough to hurt you. Almost done. more here. Last one. You need another piece. You need a little bit more up here. Looks great. Now it's time to crank up our heat. And we're going to go to about 250, 260 degrees. And I'm going to let these saute for about six minutes per side until they're ni a nice light golden brown. These are done on the first side, and they've been in here about five and a half minutes. They're beautiful golden brown. And right before I flip them over, I'm just going to add a little drizzle of extra olive oil up the center of the pan so that when I flip them over, the second sides have some fat that they can brown in. Beautiful golden brown, just beautiful. And we'll let these cook on the second side for about five and a half to six minutes. Okay, the chicken is golden brown on both sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the skillet back down to 200 degrees, just a nice, safe, warm temperature. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sprinkle the tops with some Parmesan cheese. It wouldn't be chicken parmesan if I didn't put parmesan cheese on it. As much or as little of this as you want. And last but not least, I'm going to fold a slice of mozzarella cheese and put it on the top of each one. Hungry? I am. Two more. And the only thing left to do is put a lid on it and wait for the cheese to melt, and then it's time to eat. I don't
don't usually try to tell people what to do, but if you're a parent in a busy family, an electric skillet is a smart investment. It allows you to pan fry and saute burgers and chops. It's perfect for pancakes, grilled cheese, and even reheating leftover pizza. So remember, when the school bells ring and in between, one skillet meals go a long way to fit your family's busy schedule. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. A quick and easy chicken parm dinner? Count me in. Now when we come back on the center of it all, we talk to the doctors at the Cleveland Clinic. Welcome back to the center of it all. When your children are in the classroom, they're at a greater risk of getting sick. The doctors at the Cleveland Clinic have some tips on how to keep them healthy. The start of the school year goes hand in hand with the start of the cold and flu season. Dr. Michael Conairzak, a pediatrician at Cleveland Clinic Children's, says kids aren't exposed to as many germs when they're outside playing all summer. But once they go back to school, germs have a field day. All of a sudden, everything gets spread from person to person, and so, um, so germs definitely have more people in close quarters in combination with not leaving small rooms, and there's less places for the germs to go, and so. Um, that's usually why we see an uptick in people getting sick. Anytime a child touches something, germs get on their hands. It's important to remind children to wash their hands frequently to prevent the spread of germs, especially after sneezing or using the bathroom. Doctors recommend hands and wrists are washed for 20 seconds with soap and warm water to get rid of cold and flu viruses. A good way to remember how long to wash your hands is to sing happy birthday twice while scrubbing. Dr. Con Zach says alcohol-based hand sanitizing gels are popular, but it's important to keep two things in mind for best results. It works best if you don't have anything on your hands actively, like any dirt or debris, number one. Otherwise, it's not going to be as effective. And number two, the main trick is you want to use it until you wiped your hands dry. So you want to keep rubbing the gel until it's gone. Dr. Conair Zach recommends practicing good hand washing habits at home throughout the school year, especially for younger children. That's all for this edition of the Center of It All. For more great WHBL content, log on to our YouTube page and like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and have a great week.